Hello, nurse. Hello, friends. Cyberry here. And I'm going to be playing a little bit of Pokemon TCG today. I want to show you a deck uh, I've been messing around with for a bit. Um, also going to talk some Pokemon. First we have Carbink. He's only in this deck because of that ability. Because um, he's immune to Pokemon EX, which is a big part of the metagame these days. It's a big part of decks. Uh, I got Fennekin and Brakeson. Uh, these are the only ones I use. But it's only here for Psy Storm by Delphox. That Psy Storm attack does 20 damage times the amount of energy attached to all Pokemon in play, which can be really overwhelming. Here we have Hoopa, which is a big part of the early game of this deck, but it's not actually used as an attacking card. Um, you merely put it on your bench, and by doing that, you activate its ability to search your deck for three Pokemon EX cards and put them in your hand. So it's it's a good way for me to get the next couple cards on my deck, uh, the Mewtwo and the Mewtwo EX, whichever I need. This Mewtwo EX I'm using over the other one because Shatter Shot is pretty good, but damage change is key because you can both heal yourself and damage the opponent. So that's a must, uh, especially with a trainer I'll introduce later. Uh, this Mew Mega Mewtwo EX, um, Psychic Affinity Attack. This attack does 30 more damage for the amount of energy attached to both active Pokemon, plus the base 10. So it's almost like the same attack as the Delphox before. Um, it's different, obviously it only works with the active Pokemon, but it is the same, you know, same theory, the same concept behind the attack. So obviously you can tell in this deck um, evolution is going to be important, uh, finding energy or putting energy on is important, and you know getting the right trainers at the right time is key. But as I said, evolution is first and foremost, which is why I'm running Evo Soda in this deck. And then beyond that, I've got Max Elixir Mega Turbo currently, I might get rid of that. Professor Slider, Trainer's Mail, I'm running two Ultra Ball. Running the VS Seekers, I only got three, so we'll see how that goes. Lysander. I'm also running Misty's Determination, where you discard a card from your hand. If you do, look at the top eight cards of your deck and put one of them into your hand. Now, you don't have to show it to them at all, but you shuffle the other cards back into your deck. It's highly likely that with this card you will find a double colorless in your deck, and it's a good way to search for those. Also, it's a good way to, you know, as a backup plan, search for other trainers that can help you with whatever you're looking for at the moment. And I'm running a uh, Pokemon fan club. Uh, that's how I'm gonna put Pokemon on my bench to begin with. Um, and I'm running Skyla, which, God, I love Skyla. She's awesome. Uh, the card is really good, also the art is really good. Uh, and I'm running Wally temporarily. It should be an Evo Soda, but I don't have enough. And as a stadium, I'm running Shrine of Memories, which allows each player's evolved Pokemon to use the previous evolution's moves. So this allows my Mewtwo EX, my Mega, excuse me, to use the healing damage change from the regular base Mewtwo EX as well, which is very good for keeping him alive and I don't need trainers to heal him because he can do it himself. I'm running Floatstone for retreating and I'm running two Spirit Links for Mewtwo, which I wish I had three, but I'm going with that. So uh, that's the basic walkthrough of the deck, you get the gist of it, and now let's find a match. Man, I am beyond excited for Pokemon Sun and Moon in just a few months, uh, especially seeing the growing number of links between Pokemon and Alchemy. What? Tails never fails, how does that work? Anyway, so it was stated by Game Freak that Rockruff shared a secret with the starters, right? And there are some rumors about what that is. Oh man, this is the worst starting hand for this deck. Because like I said before, this, this Hoopa EX is only good for finding other Pokemon. And it only works, the ability only works if you place him from your hand to your bench. And so if that's all I have in my starting hand. That's very unfortunate, which it's the worst start I can have with this deck. Anyway, um, 
the starters, Rowlett, Lytton, and Poplio, share an uncanny resemblance to the alchemical symbols for salt, sulfur, and mercury. Um, also, it appears that rock rough symbolizes lead, another common alchemical ingredient. Um, should I get two? Should I grab a car bank? No, I should get two. I should totally get two. Uh, car bank is going to be kind of useful, but I need to fill this bench up with the Mewtwo's right now. Maybe the only chance I get. Sorry guys, I'm getting sidetracked. Got focus problems. Um, put the other one down. I don't want to use that or that yet. Uh, seems like I got a power play in a couple turns with that floatstone. So that could be good. The Ultra Ball might come in handy, but not as it is now. Anyway, uh, back on topic. This leads directly to another quote from Game Freak, uh, essentially saying that this time the starters will play an important role in the story itself. Uh, but what is their role? Uh, does that importance link them to Rockruff? Is that the secret? Um, also, Rockruff's forked evolutionary path has been revealed uh, with a midday form and a midnight form, I believe they're called. Uh, will the starters have two evolution chains as well? Or is it the alchemy angle that they share? Man, kind of can't do anything else with this hand yet. I'm just gonna evolve and call it good. The interesting part about the alchemy relation, um, it relates to the new Pokemon Type Null. It is visibly a chimera based from Greek mythology. Uh, basically, it's an alchemical creation merging animals together to form a stronger creature. Type Null is even classified as the synthetic Pokemon too, and according to the info revealed about it, uh, we know that it was created to fulfill a mission that required a Pokemon powerful enough to rival those spoken of in mythology. Uh, it was given a mask designed to control its power, and that mask has a striking resemblance to the ring around Arceus. So it looks as if it was an attempt to create a god. Uh, here's that power play I was talking about. Oop is almost dead, but yeah, I'm not gonna use that. Should pull him out, put him in, kill the Flareon, grab two prizes. Now, the main goal of alchemy is to create a Philosopher's Stone and to obtain the power of God, or in this case, Arceus. Uh, to do that, to create a Philosopher's Stone, you need four elements. Salt, Sulfur, Mercury, around a base of lead, which is commonly used for the more nefarious alchemical reactions. And, well at least that Delphox not prized anymore. I just won't have it anymore. Hey, got a double colorless though. Anyway, uh, so the starters represent the ingredients needed to create a Philosopher's Stone, or, or the ingredients needed to obtain the power of Arceus, in this case. And Type Null, with his bird-like front talons, a blue aquatic tail, and a potentially cat-like head, as the, uh, sorry, as the ear shape shows, with a base of lead, or a canine-like body. Now they can put an energy down under either of these. I'm gonna run with the brakes in, because um, he means less if I lose it. It's, uh, it's less risk play to put him out next. Oh my god. I, I cannot wake up for the life of me over here. If he's got a double color, so I'm gonna take a lot of damage this turn. And there it is. Will I survive? I don't know. I'm not in the mood to do the math. Anyway. Um, it looks as if some twisted alchemy combined Rowlet, Lytton, and Poplio, oh, and Rockruff, in an attempt to create another Arceus, but all they got was a failed experiment that was type null. Um, and this really makes the plot thicken because it makes that question of the theory lean in the alchemical direction. I'm still asleep. Oh man, there's no way for me. I don't have a card in my deck that can help me wake up from this. 
Oh man. Looks like evolving is the last thing I'm doing this turn. But who do I put this energy under? Do I hope for that Delphox? Here's to hoping. Alright, how about another example? Let's take a look at the legendaries. Oh, you know what? That was probably a mistake. Damn it. So I essentially lose a Mewtwo. And now I'm in a position where if I don't draw, it makes the most sense to put Hoopa out because I have that float stone. Um, if, but if I don't draw Delphox or wait to get it, I need to stall for more time, which means I'm giving up another EX Pokemon and two more prizes. So this could get bad. This could get bad. He got me right. Yeah, he's got me where he wants me. I guess I've got to put this under the Mewtwo. See what I can do. If I can get three under him, I think that would be enough to kill it. Delphox break. I'm not gonna do the math right now, not till it's relevant, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, first we'll look at Solgaleo. Uh, it's been much talked about that he is a steel type instead of a fire type because he represents the beast that devours the sun, which is imagery found in alchemy that has to do with the purification of metals. Um, and this description, beast that devours the sun, is actually mirrored in his official description as well. <laughs> Bye, Hoopa. <laughs> I gotta put the brakes in down. Okay, it's getting clutch over here now. Hmm. Okay, is this enough? Because okay, he's got three there. So if you told us six on the active Pokemon, six times 30 is 180, 190. That's enough. That's, that's just enough. Um, unless I'm forgetting about like resistance or some shit. So let's retreat. I would have rather not have to put him out, but I couldn't chance losing Mewtwo and losing the game with that one play. Get wrecked. You know what I'm saying? Skyla. That could be real useful. I don't know what for yet, but it could make the difference between winning and losing at this point, I think. The only unfortunate thing is it's a supporter, so I don't even be able to play um, normal trainer or like an item card or a stadium that first turn or I could wait the next turn and then play a supporter. So it's a good card for the slow game or for items. Volcanion. Volcanion and Delphox is a really good core for getting energy and whatnot. He's also putting every bit of energy he has on the Flareon but the Flareon once a turn can pull energy from every Pokemon that has one and put it on itself. So he'd be far more benefited to put it under the Lugia in this case or the Volcanion and go from there. I'm gonna search. I'm thinking Lysander, because if I can kill that Flareon, he has no energy, and he's got one prize, one KO left, so it could be really, really good for me. So I'm going to do that. I will not attack, because I will not chance killing that Lugia, because if I kill the Lugia, I lose the element of surprise pulling the Flareon in. He could hit me, he could kill me, I don't exactly know what he's got in his hand, so I don't know if that Volcanion can boost the damage yet. Probably gonna put another energy under that Flareon. So he's got five, which would be a decent chunk of damage, I'm not gonna lie. Now, talking about legendaries again, let's bring Chimeras back into the mix. Uh, one of the specific types of Chimera, the Manticore, is particularly interesting here. Yeah, there's that other energy I was dreading. Anyway, uh, Manticore is a amalgamation of a lion, a bat, and a scorpion. This scorpion, assumingly, would be Marshadow in this case, which is a third legendary that 
hasn't been revealed, but his name has. Uh, most people are thinking it'll be a dolphin, which is fair. There's a ton of other symbolism that works well with a dolphin. But I'd put my money on it being a scorpion type, uh, which I'd guess would be a dark bug, dark electric, or dark fairy type, because those are all combinations we haven't had yet. Hey, Evo Soda. Alright, let's get a Delphox. Twinsies, I have a Delphox too. Don't have the break though. Not really something I've tried to add to my deck yet. Alright, go in here for what could be the massive turning point of this battle. There was a point at earlier where he had me exactly where he wanted me. And tides have really turned at this point. Hey, there's the shrine which doesn't help me at this point. Anyway, um, if that discussion about alchemy and how it fits into Pokemon interests you, there's actually a really good, really long video by uh, Loxton, and I'll put a link to his video in the description. Oh, there's the conceit. Well, that was a good fight, Jimmy. Um, I really like that deck. The Volcanion and the Flareon EX and the Delphox work really well together. You can pull it into your deck, you can manipulate it around, put it on whoever you want, pretty much. It's a really cool deck. Anyway, uh, check out Loxton's channel. Uh, it's going to be in the link in the description. I'll probably have it even at the end of the video here. But he's got some great videos over there, and does a lot of this alchemy in-depth talk about Pokemon. So, uh, holy crap. A hundred? That's insane. Anyway, thanks for watching. Remember to hit that subscribe button or like the video, share it with your friends. Um, by the way, stay frosty. Emergency! This is an emergency! He doesn't know I'm here. Ow! Oh. What? Why did I die? Why did I die? No, no, no. Get up. Get up. You got one more to pull. It's fine. Reactor